In this video, we're gonna create an animated glowing rainbow button like this. And yes, that is a mouthful, but I don't know how else to describe this, but I do know how to show you how to do this very easy. I'm gonna take you step by step on how to adjust it, so that way you could get your desired effect. We'll be using Elementor for this tutorial, but the same could be applied in Bricks and Breakdance. All right, let's check it out. To get started, go to the button you want to apply this effect to. So we're going to do this here in my banner with Elementor. Then we're going to go over here to Advance and then add a CSS class. We're going to call this class Galactic Button, just like this. If you are using Bricks or Breakdance, you're going to do the exact same thing, adding this class to your button. Next up, go over to a link inside the description of this video that'll take you to my blog post on this. And there is a CSS snippet right here. Copy this and we are going to paste it in our site. We're going to go here to the front and then customize. From here, we're going to add our CSS. And the reason why we are adding it here is we could adjust this and see the results live as we are making our adjustments. Then after you're finished making it the way that you like, you can move the CSS snippet to where you're managing your CSS. And if you are brand new to CSS, do not worry. I'm going to show you exactly what to edit and make this as simple as possible. Let's go ahead and publish. Go back over to your site, update it. And then let's refresh both of these. I'm going to refresh that. And we can see it's already working. Now it's very faint and subtle. I want it to be that way. I don't want it to be too sharp. But by doing this, we are actually calling more attention to that call to action. Let's go back over here to our customize. I am going to refresh this now and we can start making our adjustments. Let's go to additional CSS. And then from here, let me walk you through it. First, let me create some space. This CSS up here is for something else that I have. Right here, we do not want to change this snippet. This is keeping the button on top of the glowing. Now, the next one here, this is for the glowing effect, and this is what we are going to edit. This first part of our CSS, you're not going to touch. Leave it just as it is. Down here, though, where we are seeing these comments and these little brown sections, these grayed out sections, these are comments just for reference that we could use. We could adjust our width and height. The main thing is to keep them both the same. See, I can make this stand out a little bit more, but when it is off, it's going to do this weird orbit. So then I would just update this and we can make it bigger this way, or you can make it smaller. It all depends on your button size. Next up are the colors, and you could adjust these color codes right here to the colors that you want. You maybe don't want a rainbow color like this. You might want something closer to your brand. And if you want to make it easier to change the colors, well, you could use an app like VS Code. You could copy it and paste it in just like I did. And then you could actually go in and edit your snippets to the way that you want. Maybe I want this to be blue, and I could just easily change it like so based on what I see. Next up, we are going to be adjusting the blur. So this is something that you maybe want to have more sharp. Let's say I change it to here, first off zero. This is how it looks with no blur. But maybe we want just a little bit. We want it to stand out more. I don't advise that. I advise adding a good amount of blur anywhere between 40 to maybe even 60 or 70. I like it to be very subtle. Because if it is too strong, well, it could actually do the opposite effect. We want people to click on it, not to be scared of it. The next step is going to be the opacity. When it is at a 1, well, that is 100% opacity. I found a sweet spot at about half opacity. That is at a 0.5. But you could play around with it. Take it to a 0.7, maybe a 0.3. It also depends on the background you're using. If you're going to use this on a white background, you're going to want a lower opacity. Next, there is only one more thing that we would change, and that is going to be the animation. Now, we have it at three seconds. And to get a better look at this, I am going to change the blur to... You know, I'm going to change it to zero just so we can see it in the opacity to one. We can see it turning like this, and it's automatically rotating. That's what this CSS snippet does right here. These are our animation keyframes. 
If you want to change the interval on it, how fast it rotates, edit this part right here. This is the only part you would change. This right here, the 3S, this means three seconds. So you would change this to maybe five seconds if you want it slower. If you want it fast, you could change it to one second. You could even put it at a 0.1 second. And this is great if you want your viewers to get seizures. So I do not suggest doing this. I found a good sweet spot is between three and five seconds. Again, we want it settled. Let's go ahead and fix this. I'm going to change this back to 50 pixels blur. My opacity to uh, 0.5, which is a half of opacity and I am going to change this back to 200 I don't want it to be too big where it stands out too much see the idea behind this is to draw the eye to where we want the attention to go to which is one of the main call to actions now the way to use this inside of a design project is to be very strategic let's take a look at a mock-up design right here this is just something inside figma where i would apply this would be inside of the banner right here especially if it's a really important call to action but by using it inside of the banner it creates attention right away and that's something that we want to do when somebody clicks on the site you want to grab their attention immediately because you got less than a second to do that then we got other buttons throughout the page but i would not apply this to all buttons or else you're going to lose the magic that it could bring to your main call to action like right here i would not apply it in this button i would not apply it in this button right here either but what I would do is inside of the primary call to action down here at the bottom that we want to stand out, I would apply it again. So I'd probably use it once, maybe twice on a web page. Use it very subtly, strategically, and have fun with it. This is one of those things that could add a bit of flair to your website, a little bit of extra creativity, but also could be used to get more clicks as well. I hope you're able to have fun and create something cool with this one. And if you would like to see more of these types of videos, then don't forget get to do that good YouTube stuff. Like and subscribe. You know the deal. All right, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.